so today we begin the classification of g coverings it will take some time before we complete it complete things will not come today <coughs> the the guiding principle here the guiding or our guide here is the the simply connected covering over the base space b that just means that we are first of all assuming that simply connected covering exists okay so b is a path connected space p to p from e to b is a simply connected covering so once for all this notation will be fixed we were going to fix a base point b not in b and e not inside e above that that means p of e not is b not then this covering becomes a gp covering where gp is the galois group of p which is identified with the fundamental group pi1 of b b not right let us just recall how this identification is done so i am going to use a simpler notation j for pi1 of b b not then this isomorphism phi from pi1 of b b not to gp gp is the galois group group of all covering transformations of p okay how it is done how it is done so let me recall this namely starting with a loop at b not lift it to a path in e at the point e not look at the end point right end point is in the same fiber therefore there is a g covering there is a g map there is element of g at current transformation which takes e not to the end point of this path and that g is unique to so omega is sent to the class of omega is sent to that covering transformation this assignment is an isomorphism this is what we have proved earlier okay and we know that under covering transformations this is the action of covering transformation becomes an even action the quotient space is precisely b and quotient map is precisely p <coughs> so these things we have already seen while studying the universal covering or uh, simply connected covering and so on. okay if we change the base point e not to some other point e not prime belonging to the same fiber then the j action of e gets changed because this time you are lifting the loops not at e not but e not prime so corresponding change is just got by take the path from e not to e not prime inside e so that is p of omega will become a loop in in uh, in b at b not so the entire action gets conjugated by this element and the inner conjugation is an automorphism so the new action is nothing but got by an automorphic change that is what we have studied last time okay on the other hand if this p omega represents a central element okay this omega is a path now p omega in inside uh, e p omega is a loop in phi 1 in in inside b at b not so if this is an element a uh, central element in j 
central means coming out then the conjugation is trivial in that case the covering g covering structure does not change otherwise the covering g covering structure will change all right suppose now instead of just changing the base point at the top level we change it at the bottom level the b not to be one inside b okay then the corresponding expression for j itself will be different it is no longer j but some other subgroup some other group which is again isomorphic to j it is pi1 now b b1 right and what is the automorphism here or or, or isomorphism given by h tau where this tau is the path from b0 to b1 so we are conjugating by this h tau it's a path it's not a loop so it's not a inner conjugation okay so <laughs> under this again there is some automorphism of this group so the action will be the g action will be different once again corresponds to some automorphism that's what we have seen so there are all these change of base points etc all these things are taken care in the concept of g covering they we may give you different g covering and theorem that we studied to two modules behind that tells you what exactly the changes can be namely all the once the once the covering transform once the covering projection is the same then the g actions are different only by an automorphism so this is the theorem that we have already studied okay now in the classification this becomes our central idea and this this itself gets extended this idea gets extended now let us go back to another construction of g coverings long back we introduced what is called as extension of g actions right so we use that one starting with the homomorphism from this fundamental group to any other group g take some homomorphism group homomorphism extend the e action the g j action on e e is the you know e is the simply connected covering that is fixed okay to a g action by looking at this e alpha what is the definition of e alpha i am recalling it it is g cross a the total space but now we are going to have a quotient here namely equivalence relation g comma t times e where t is an element of j okay e is equivalent to is identified with g times alpha t remember alpha is homomorphism alpha t is an element of g so this g and this alpha t are combined inside g there is a group operation inside g so this one element of g comma e so this is the equivalence relation and you go modulo this equivalence relation that is the space e alpha okay so this was the uh, definition of e alpha on e alpha g will act from the first factor here so it becomes a g space there is a g action on this quotient space now okay so we call the have notation e prime to e alpha because the action of j on e is e1 it will follow easily that the g action on e prime is e1 
okay therefore we get a g covering from from e prime again you take e prime itself is a quotient in this way but now you take the quotient by g action then you call what you get is the same space b the original space b p prime from e prime to b given by p prime of g e equal to p e the first factor here the second factor here sorry the the first factor totally disappears why because first you quotiented out by the by whatever overflow here then g action will will further take away all this everything is identified okay so this is a g covering starting with a j covering we have converted into a g covering why ya this map alpha okay if alpha were isomorphism then you can treat this as a j covering itself okay both of them are j covering the usual map here e going to 1 comma e that's a canonical map that will be a j map therefore it's a j isomorphism okay so you understand this covering this uh, construction i have just recorded it once we have uh, extension of g action etc we have studied there itself all these things are rigorously done under exercises now let this curly g be denote set of all equivalence classes of g coverings over b g is a group this curly g denotes all the equivalence class of g coverings it has nothing to do with the fundamental group of b that would have been a j coverings so that i would have denoted by curly j b okay all right now suppose you you define a homomorphism you define a set theoretic map from homomorphisms of j into g into equivalence classes of covering g coverings by taking a homomorphism alpha to this extension fibers extension of actions e alpha and take its equivalent class so we get a set theoretic map here okay the aim is to prove that this itself is a bijection starting with a homomorphism we get a g covering starting with a g covering you must get a homomorphism such that if you use the that homomorphism and come back you must get the same equivalence class and vice versa so this must be a bijection of equivalence classes here here just j homomorphism there is no equivalence classes here okay every homomorphism stands on its own all right so how do we uh, do this bijection by precisely constructing its inverse directly constructing inverse therefore this proof is going to be completely constructive we have constructed the map mu instead of saying there is a bijection we are giving you a bijection okay of course we are giving the map and then showing that it's bijection so it's a constructive proof constructing the inverse of mu let us do that okay yeah given a g covering e prime to b representing one class i have to construct a homomorphism right let us fix a base point e not prime inside e prime such that 
P prime of E naught prime is the given base point B naught. This you can do. All right. So E P B is is the standard simply connected covering with E naught B naught etc. As usual. Once E is a simply connected covering. This is a covering. By the lifting criteria, because it is simply connected, this this P can be lifted. So there will be a P bar such that P prime composite P bar is P. Okay, if I specify where the initial point E naught goes, then this P bar is uniquely defined. So what I do is I demand P bar of E naught is equal to E naught prime. So this P bar is completely determined by this property. Namely, it is a covering. It is a, a lift of P, and it takes E naught to E naught prime. Okay. So these notations I am going to fix up now. Remember, this is some arbitrary G covering. This is the simply connected covering over P. I told you this is going to be our guide. Okay. So out of this, we will now construct a homomorphism from J, namely G P of this one, to G P of G P prime of that. This is J is G G P group of covariant transformations of P, and G is group of covariant transformations of P prime. That's what we are going to construct now. Okay. So. Construction is obvious now, more or less. Starting with a class here, which we can represent by by a loop. Okay. Lift this loop to a path in e, at e naught through p in e. Okay. Take p bar of that lifted path. That will be a path. At e naught prime, and if you take p prime of that, that will give you back omega. Therefore, you can think of this as a lift of. There is a loop here, so instead of I don't know whether I can lift it here, all right, but I can lift it here, and then I take the image there. That will be lift. That's all I am doing. So. P bar composite omega twiddle is a lift of omega through E naught prime through P P at E naught prime through P. P prime of this end point is B naught, right? So it follows that the P P bar composite omega twiddle is in the same fiber. Therefore, there is a unique G such that G of E naught prime is equal to this end point. So, starting with omega, we have got an element G. This G is an element of capital G. The relation is precisely given by this equation nineteen. I am calling this G as alpha omega. Alpha omega, operating upon E naught prime, gives you the end point of the lift of omega through P prime. Which I read, write it as p bar of omega twiddle. So this alpha is the function from j to g. There is no ambiguity in the definition because the endpoints depend only on the homotopy class. Endpoint is always the same, no matter which uh, uh, which loop you take to represent the homotopy class. Okay, so I am recalling the isomorphism between G P and J here. Okay, I just recalled it just now. But let us let us denote phi as the inverse of this. Let us let us let us see what is the inverse of this one. Inverse of J to this one. Starting with phi, starting with the omega, lift it. Okay, just at E naught. Look at the end point. 
and that end point corresponds to the image of E naught under a covering transformation, and that covering transformation is phi omega. That's a unique such thing. So phi omega of E naught is the end point of omega two. This is the correspondence for the inverse of that. All right. So if this is the case, you apply p bar, p bar of phi omega E naught. Okay. Will give you this p bar phi omega omega prime. Therefore, it is alpha omega of E naught prime. Okay, alpha omega p bar of E naught. E naught prime is p bar. Of e so this equation is equivalent to that. So this will tell you what is the relation between alpha and this phi. Okay, phi bar, phi of omega. P bar of that is alpha omega of P bar. This you can take it as definition of alpha. Okay, either this one or this one, or it's ninety. Okay. Now you take P prime on both sides. P prime of P bar of P omega. Okay, what is it? P prime P bar is all this P. It's P of P omega. But p phi omega is a covering transformation, so it is p. Okay, so this is just p. Same thing if you take p prime of alpha omega of p bar, p prime of alpha omega alpha omega is an element of G. If p prime p prime is a covering transformation is a covering projection. So it's same thing as p prime. P prime of p bar is p. That means. These two are both lifts of P, and they agree at one point because of this definition. Okay, at E naught they are equal. What does it mean? They are equal everywhere. So what I get is this is to lift substitution equation tells you they agree at P naught. They are equal everywhere. Alpha omega composite P bar is the same thing as. P bar composite phi omega. Okay, so this is the equation we have got. This is equation for the covering transformations and P bar and so on. This is valid for all points of E. Okay, now given any another element tau, let us say tau is an element of J. Bracket tau, you can compose it on the right. Okay, p bar, p omega, phi of tau. Start phi tau, p bar omega phi tau. In this equation, you operate on the right bar phi omega. Phi, another covering transformation. So phi omega, phi tau taken on both sides. So I get this one. Okay, you evaluate it at e naught. You get this equation. Okay, but phi is a homomorphism. Phi omega composite phi tau is nothing but phi of omega star tau, right? Omega star tau. So this is nothing but p bar of you lift omega star tau. As you know, this is uh, loop composition. Lift it and take the endpoint. Okay, so that is. By the definition in ninety, this is nothing but alpha of this element now, alpha of omega star tau, operating on p bar of e naught or e naught prime. So this is the LHS. RHS. What is RHS? This part, this part is alpha tau, alpha tau of this one by very definition. So I will just put. On the other hand, again by nineteen. P bar of phi tau is alpha tau of P bar of phi tau. <coughs> Then I have left multiplication alpha omega. So the whole whole thing I get alpha omega composed alpha tau. Alpha is a homomorphism. That is what we want to prove. I don't know that, but this composite is equal to P bar of phi tau. One hand it is equal to this one. Here and other hand, it is equal to this. 
So these two are equal means alpha omega star tau operating on p bar e naught is equal to alpha omega into alpha tau operating on p bar e naught. Now you use the fact that the actions are fixed point free. Therefore, if they agree at one point, these elements must be the same. Therefore, alpha is a homomorphism. Okay. The proof is somewhat similar to what we have done for earlier, right? Due to fixed point finesse, these two will come. So, construction of the homomorphism is over. Corresponding to any G covering, we have got a homomorphism. But what we want is corresponding to equivalence class here, there must be a homomorphism. So, what we have to show? We must show that this alpha is independent of the class. For whole class, whatever you choose, you should get the same alpha. It is the same for the whole entire class. So that remains to be shown. Let us show that one. Okay. So let us verify that alpha is independent of the G equivalence class. Suppose P double prime, E double prime to B is another G covering. Okay. And F from E prime to E double prime is a G equivalent. G equivalence means it's G map. That is the meaning of two coverings are equivalent, right? So you have G map F from E prime to E double prime. I, I can assume that E naught double prime is, such, is equal to F of E naught prime. This is the base point I am choosing. Base point I have to choose. Okay. So that is the base point for E double prime. Then what happens? P bar is there. You compose it with F. That will role, play the role of P bar for the P double prime. Remember, we are used P bar for all these from E to E prime. Now you compose with F, you get E to E double prime. This F composed P bar will play the role of P bar for E double prime. Okay, and it maps E naught to the base point. Base point is being mapped to the base point. Okay. Now let us assume that whatever you have constructed for E double prime is beta. Beta from J to J is corresponding to homomorphism for E double prime. I have to show that alpha is equal to beta. What is the equation for beta? By definition, this 19, what I have got is beta omega of E naught double prime is F composite P bar of omega to little f. Because this is the lift of omega in E double prime. So its end point defines beta omega. For alpha inside E prime, we have the old, old equation. Alpha omega of E naught prime is equal to P bar of omega. Okay. So this is for E prime and this is for E double prime. Therefore, beta omega of E double prime, which is F of P bar of omega twiddle, which is nothing but f of p bar omega twiddle is I am substituting this one. Alpha omega of E naught prime. Okay, now use the fact that F is a G map and alpha is an element of G. So this alpha omega comes out F of E naught prime. Okay, but what is F of E naught prime? It's E naught double prime. So you have beta omega E naught prime. E naught double prime is alpha omega of E naught double prime. Again, by G action, which is E1 action, so fixed point free, therefore, this alpha omega must be equal to beta. But this is true for any omega, therefore, alpha equal to beta. So, what we have done is we have a map from here, we have a map from home JG to JB mu, 
now we have a map from jb to home jg new right so we have constructed a map like this what we want to show that mu and nu are inverses of each other so we have constructed this map we want to say that these are inverses of each other that we will do next time for this for today this is enough thank you